What's going on, guys? It's your boy Ant, GodBank32 on Instagram, and today we're back with a review for the Super Mario Brothers movie. Let's go! guys i just got done watching the super mario brothers movie man and for me a child that grew up in the 90s grew up in the 2000s where the real video game boom happened and throughout my childhood myself and so many of my friends were attached to the super mario brothers game man this movie was just a delight and i just feel like if you're a fan of super mario brothers if you're a fan of all of the games that came out you're gonna love this movie for one reason or another but we're gonna get into it Starting from the voice cast, man, everybody involved in lending their voice to these characters did an amazing job. Some people stood out more than others, but not to say those people did a bad job at all, man. From Chris Pratt to Seth Rogen and everybody in between did an amazing job. But for me, the person that stood above everybody else was Jack Black as Bowser, man. He's ridiculous in this film. His voice is unrecognizable until he starts singing, and there's nothing more you could say about him, man. He definitely captures the feel of Bowser, and now going on, every time I see Bowser, I'ma see Jack Black. Another standout in the voice cast for me was Keegan Michael Key. His voice was unrecognizable in here. I was literally going through the majority of the movie like, I wonder who's playing him, because I, I forgot that he was playing Toto up until the end of the movie when I seen the credits. I was literally poking my friend like, Keegan Michael Key was playing Toto, for real? Yeah, his voice was crazy in there, man. But let's get to the person that most people had super trepidations about. Chris Pratt definitely came in and knocked this one out of the park for me, man. His voice was almost unrecognizable. I knew it was him because I knew he was Mario going into this movie. But if I didn't know that was Chris Pratt, there's a, there's a majority of this film where I couldn't have recognized who it was and I would have had to wait until the end of the movie. Ian Taylor Joy as Princess Peach was also amazing. And Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong really made me laugh so much throughout this movie, man. Even his stupid laugh really lent itself perfectly to the Donkey Kong that they portrayed in this movie. The movie looks amazing, man. Illumination Studios did their job on this one, and the trailers didn't lie when it came to the look of the entire Mushroom Kingdom and every other kingdom that we stopped on on the journey of the movie. Also, I think that the characterization of these characters definitely lent itself to everything that we know about all of these Mario characters, except for one. Princess Peach in this joint is a badass, like, she's no more the damsel in distress, and she's updated for 2023 and everything that we know about this new girl power age. Whether you like that or not, I love that update for the character, and she went out here and did her job. Even though she got captured at one point in here, and Bowser took her into the castle, it was all landing into a plan she had to escape at the end. And she also played a pivotal role at multiple points through the movie, being Mario's guide in the Mushroom Kingdom. The movie starts with a hilarious action scene where Bowser goes ahead and destroys the Penguin Kingdom. And all I can say is the action scenes just keep ramping up from there. Everything was so great. It lent itself perfectly to the world that we're inhabiting. And a lot of it felt like a Super Smash Bros. movie when it came to the action scenes, man. Everything lent itself perfectly to each other. And I definitely enjoyed it and there's so many Easter eggs in here if you're a longtime fan of Mario at any age for the last 40 years there's gonna come a point where you're like oh my god I remember that even from the original voice of Mario making a cameo within like the first 10 minutes of the film and the original name of Mario and the original game making a cameo right alongside him. The Jumpman logo will be right there and it's up to the keen eyed viewers to spot it. The soundtrack is amazing. I feel like that's one of the things that really brought me into this movie more than anything else, especially at the start, because it starts off with like a orchestra version of the Mario theme. You know, everybody knows the Mario theme. -na 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 -na. Na, 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 da, da, da. Yeah, man, like, there's so many different variations of all the themes that plays in all the different games and all the different iterations of Mario, man. And it, again, it lent itself perfectly to this world that we're in. While there were a couple needle drops that definitely took me out of it just a little bit, there was another great orchestrated version of a song to pull me right back into the world and to bring me back to my childhood once more. But yeah. All in all, I think this was a very good movie. It wasn't great, and there was a couple drawbacks in it, but I think it will be overall enjoyable 
for all ages and anybody who was a fan of Mario and all the little kids who are just getting familiar with Mario right now. Overall, I think it was a very good film and enjoyable for all ages, especially if you're a fan of Mario. And I think there were different things that happened in each scene, in each part of the movie that would bring in fans of all ages and anybody who has played any of the Mario games that have played any of the Smash Brothers games and who have just been a part of Nintendo history. The only negative that I could really say about this movie that really brought it down a little bit in my book and would have definitely elevated it up to pass in a lot of the other video game adaptations that have came out over the past few years is the story. The story is basically non-existent, man. It's 100% something that you will find in a bare bones Mario video game. We get to the Mushroom Kingdom and we have to stop Bowser. That's basically it. We get there, we have to learn how to traverse this new area. We have to learn how to fight with these weapons and we got to stop Bowser at the end. That's about it. And I think there was a lot of great setup in the beginning for it to expand and make a better story that they just left short. But again, I think there are so many other things, so many character moments, so many Easter eggs, so many beloved characters in there that when you start watching this movie, you'll get sucked right in. And if not love it, you'll definitely just enjoy yourself at the theater. I had a smile on my face almost the entire movie and I was chuckling throughout. And at times it genuinely brought out a giant laugh out of me that kept me even more engaged and, and was just ready to see what they're gonna bring out next. But yeah guys, did you see the Mario movie? What did you think about it? Have you been a Mario fan? And if so, what's your favorite Mario game? For me, I give this movie a 6.5. It was good, could have been great, but there was no story to be found that would have bumped this movie up two more notches on the scale and made it a great movie, man. But still, if you're a fan of Mario, if you have been invested in the games forever, I think it's gonna be definitely enjoyable for you and for the little kids because all of the kids in my theater enjoyed the movie thoroughly. They was laughing throughout, nobody fell asleep and everybody had a great time at the theater. But yeah, guys, if you like what you see in here, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps us way more than you know and it helps us beat the YouTube algorithm and if you want to be notified when we upload new videos, go ahead and click that little bell icon. Thank you.